After finding them online, Sneaker Kit very kindly sent me one of their kits for me to build. And today, we'll be building it together. I've never done this before. I've always wanted to make my own shoes, but have been terrified about the process because it's so complex and complicated. But today, today is the day where I make my very first pair of sneakers. Inside the kit they sent me are the two soles as well as the two insoles they also added in. This little kit of thread, needle and eyelets for the laces as well as I, I asked them if they could send me one of these which is their little punches, rotary tools. You don't need to have done any leather work to be able to do this, that is very important. Although it will help if you want to do what I'm going to be doing today. For these shoes I'll be using some really nice vegetable tan Niagara leather from the Radama Catanery. Um, this is in 2mm thick but I've also got a piece in 1.2 or 1.4mm thick which I'll be using uh, in, in some areas of this build. I've gone ahead and printed out the template and cut it out already. Uh, we'll trace it out, obviously doing it twice and flipping it around between shoes to make sure we've got left and right. I'm going to be adding reinforcements around the grommets and this is why I am going to be tracing uh, four of these pieces here to go along the inside edge of the shoe. Now that everything is cut I am ready to start skiving beveling and uh, burnishing all the edges that need it at this stage. Before I start gluing anything in place, I do want to go ahead and burnish my heel counters along this edge. To do that, I am using a tokenol, which is my absolute go-to burnishing agent, and it's very simple to do, it just takes a bit of time, uh, as most things in level work, really just simple to do, it just takes a bit of time. You want to have a tiny bit of tokenol all along the edge, and then using a cotton cloth or rag. Uh, I find 100% pure cotton works best for this. Just go ahead and rub the edges with some energy. Now has come time to glue the counters on and it will also be the right moment to start gluing all my pieces together, at least for those that need gluing. I'm using this special tool which is basically a tiny tiny rasp um, and I'm just going to rough up the top surface of this leather the idea being that you want the, the the glue to be able to get into those fibers and adhere better on those fibers so you don't really need much it's just a question of getting rid of that top layer and opening up those fibers just a smidgen the heel counters have been glued on and so have these uh, reinforcements for the eyelets here the next thing to do is go ahead and sand these edges flush before I can bevel them and burnish them. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper, that should do the trick. It might take a bit longer than if I had 80 grit or whatever, but I, I like this one. It's a good middle ground between going fast and being just slow enough to take your time and make sure you don't make any mistakes, or not too many mistakes, let's say. That's already much better. Just three more edges to go. All my edges have been properly burnished and I have marked out where my stitches are going to go. For my stitching, I love to use Crimson Hides stitching irons um, and this is the French tip in the 3.25 spacing and I'll be using this gorgeous caramel Maisie M60 thread, which is 0.6 millimeters, which I'll be coating in wax just for extra added strength. Um, yeah, let's get, let's get stitching.
After a couple of hours of stitching, my pieces are finally ready, all stitched up and burnished, and I'm really pleased with the result. I've even gone ahead and added in a few extra little details just to remind myself of who made these, just in case I needed a reminder on that. For the next part, I'm going to be using the hole punch that they sent me, um, which seems surprisingly sturdy, to be really honest with you guys. Um, I've tested it out briefly, and it works slowly, so excited to see how it's going to work on these, and I hope it does work flawlessly, because I am now very nervous about what I'm going to be doing next. Anyway, here goes. As they say, no omelette without breaking eggs. Uh, just light impression at first, just to check if I'm center. I'm not. That's better. Oof. That's a good sound. Grommet goes in like that, and the flat side comes up against this one. The curved side is on the inside. And yeah, just press. There we go, it's installed. That's surprisingly easy. I'm very pleased with the result. Let's go ahead and do all 8, 16, 32 of these. And I've got loads, so I should be, should be fine. All the eyelets are in. Now it's time to go ahead and uh, punch out these holes all along the edges on the base. And for that, we have a tool on this as well. Now I could use just a simple all, but in this case, I'm just going to be using the recommended tool that comes here because I'm curious to test it. Now the soles do have indications of where the stitches should go, um, but these do need to be punched through. So as you can see, none of these holes are is actually um, open. So yeah, just need to go around and uh, punch through my all the holes before I can start stitching. We've now arrived at the time when we can finally start stitching, and they've provided a very generous amount of thread here. So, um, so they do tell you where to start. I'm starting with left foot here, and they still tell you to start at this hole there. So let's get going. They've also added in a small indication on the inside of the sole, just in case of where to start. So go ahead and pull your thread through, leaving, yeah, that's perfect. Leaving that, uh, find where your first stitch is going to go. Okay, let's, uh, let's get to it. I was tempted to go ahead and do a saddle stitch, but actually, again, uh, their design seems to be very well thought out. So I just thought I'd try just to follow their indications in this one and not do anything fancy. Um, but again, if you're if you're into leather work and you want to do a saddle stitch, then that definitely is in the cards here, I guess. Okay, quite easy to go back through. That's a relief. I was worried about the rubber catching there, but uh, it didn't. So, yeah. Okay, adding in the front of the shoe, this is where I completely expect things to get much more complicated because I'm using a very um, strong vegetable tanned leather, which also means it's quite stiff and uh, will in time bend beautifully and, and conform to my foot, of course. But right now for stitching, I definitely assume, I don't know yet, I assume this might be the most complicated stitching part. But then again, if you guys are using any other material than this, you probably won't be having uh, difficulties that I might, and I'm not even sure yet, and, and I'll see if I get there, but I might encounter difficulties doing this. There we go, the sneakers are now sewn in, and I'm so impressed with the result. It was just as I expected, really easy, 
overall, but my choice of material made it much harder than it would be with something uh, soft and pliable. Um, so I am so pleased that I chose this leather. Um, I'm so pleased that I was able to make these. Um, it was hard, my hands are hurting quite a bit, but the next stage is to protect them. And that is going to be to oil them and then to wax them. And I like to use uh, Nisot oil to oil them and then Saphir Renovateur for the base coat of wax. It gives me a really nice shiny waxy surface while nourishing the leather. And then go ahead and use Saphir Mede d'Or. But I won't show you the whole process of that. I'm just going to show you the reveal, the big fancy reveal at the end uh, when they're all finished. So stick around for that. The shoes are now finished and I am incredibly uh, happy about the result. Now, they're not perfect by any means, but wow, I am blown away by uh, just the looks and what I've been able to achieve, uh, given that I've never made shoes like this. I've made baby shoes of very simple PDF templates, but nothing like this. And the idea of making shoes before today really, to me, seemed like a pipe dream, something I might learn much, much later on in life, but definitely not uh, something I'd be doing so soon. And I don't consider this to be really making shoes. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, lots of great cobblers out there. Clearly for me, this isn't really making shoes. This is assembling shoes at best. But even so, uh, the fact that I was the one to assemble these makes these so much more unique and special to me. And certainly it does open up a huge amount of possibilities to give you a bit of uh, an overview of my thoughts on this sneaker kit kit. First of all, I am quite impressed by the quality of the tools and materials that they've sent over. Now, obviously, uh, this is not the leathers that they supply. Uh, they have a variety of leathers, which is uh, much more supple and maybe much better uh, for this kind of job. I went with a very stiff, really premium leather. In fact, the most premium leather that I have at hand uh, from Rademacher Tannery. So it means that these shoes overall do actually cost a fair bit with this leather, but that being said, I do think that anyone can make these with just a bit of patience and care. You don't have to have any experience in leather work. You certainly don't have to have had made shoes before to make these. And uh, I think as long as you're a bit crafty in general, you definitely will be able to manage this without any problem. I 100% recommend Sneaker Kit to anyone who wants to get into making their own sneakers. Uh, they look cool, they are, uh, surprisingly comfortable actually, at least the soles are surprisingly comfortable because the uppers, <laughs> my, my uppers are going to need a serious break in, but the soles are surprisingly comfortable and uh, the, the overall experience was really fun and easy. And I think easy is the key word here. So go ahead and pick one of these up as I'm sure you're going to have a, a great time playing out of them. And if you've enjoyed this video, I know you're going to enjoy this video just here, where I show you my five shop tips that really will help you in your leather craft, whatever uh, stage you are in that craft. Thanks for watching. See you soon. And in the meantime, happy crafting.